Well, we're midway through the action, and as expected, Shannon Campbell sits atop the leaderboard. Second place is Brian Shirley, but Clay Gilstrap's in third and Rick Dermo in fourth. They're both trying to make a push in the third and final heat before they head to the finals. And speaking of the third heat, Derek West is in the pits trying to fix his rig, hoping to make it back out and do well enough in the third heat to make the finals. All right, thanks a lot. Kevin Cruz and Clay Gilstrap, the next pair. Oh, oh, man, again it happens. There is a nasty rut on the inside of that turn, and if you get too aggressive with it too quickly, that's the result. That is a tough way to go because at that point in time, you'll automatically not finish in the top three because that six-minute slip you will be given for that particular run will put you out of the running. The key here is making four full runs on the course, Ken. Next pair, Jason Fiuli and Tim Cantrell. Jason's had a couple runs here so far at 2.30 and quicker. And oh. whoa! <laughs> Close as you can get and not go completely over there for Jason. Oh, man, both these guys have made two good runs in the first two rounds. And Jason's machine at 3.33 car has been better than 2.30 in the first couple of laps. Again, the key is make it happen. Make a full pull. Jason this time by at 2.34. Cantrell, 2.42 minutes overall. One more time on board here with Brian Shirley. Look at all the throw on that shot, kid. That thing's probably got 12, 13 inches of throw overall. Wow. Well, yeah, carrying some big speed, just kind of floating the back end up and over that jump. And, you know, talking about the shocks, you can see those things land nicely without a big kickback. The rebound set nicely. Now, if you were listening and watching this machine here, in my mind at least, it would be the one that would closely remind you of one that was built for off road race. Well, there's definitely some different looks out here in the lower center of gravities while maintaining suspension is key. Brian Shirley with a time of two minutes, 11 seconds. Pretty decent there. And again, Shannon Campbell with the time to be 1.56.93. One minute, 56 seconds and 93 hundredths. And that was the time when Chickie Barton's machine went upside down in round number two. Danny Rohr in the 425 and in the 420 is Derek West. Time to beat a minute 56.93 in any given round. Of course, they add them all up at the end of the day. Good, solid finish. And that's a nice sounding run for sure. I mean, real solid effort there out of Danny Rohr. And you got to finish here. I mean, you know, like you mentioned before, you, first of all, you have to finish the round because you never know what the next round is going to bring. One time on your side or one time up on your roof is automatically going to be basically six minutes. So at the end of the day, that's like making three runs total. So having said that, 226 to 11, Derek West. If you take a look at the point standings this year, you'll notice one thing. Shannon Campbell's name's at the top because, well, He's won every race so far this season. That puts the pressure on him here today at Jellico. And Shannon, you've won every race. What is it going to take here today to win at Jellico? Nah, keep my junk together and use my head. Hopefully we can pull out a couple more wins. What's different about this course as the other ones that you race on during the year? Uh, this one's a got a little bit more sharp rock, so you got a little bit more tendency to get a flat or something. Um, and possible chances of rain today, so it, get, it's, it might get muddy. Mastercraft seat harness is there. Robbie Pierce behind that company. Also runs a Pro 2 truck in short course off-road racing. You know it's all about keeping these guys safe. Shannon Campbell, the man on the far side of the screen there. Both struggling at the beginning of this run. And again, this is round number four. Just amazing to watch the suspension on that machine work. Well, and you could actually, actually Shannon's vehicle that we were listening to while we were watching Chris's vehicle. And Chris, they call him Chicky, Chris Chicky Barton. And I'll guarantee you one thing, Campbell made him some time. He lost a little bit going up the hill at the start of the event, but he made up for some lost ground and finishes up with 2.02. .02. Man, that is one.
one tough hill right there, kid. Absolutely. Sawing at the wheel, trying to get those tires to get a bite. And you actually see them. Sometimes they get at such an angle, they'll bounce top of these things off of a rock that's right beside them. Whatever you got to do when you get down here in the mountain in Jellico, Tennessee, and you get past that vertical climb, you can open her up a little bit here, baby. Again, taking their time. Last thing you want to do is get off course here. Get another penalty, not to mention it'll cost you more time in the next turn. And how about this, a, a rider on this particular one. He had a big old smile on his face. You see that? That's pretty cool. Napa Auto Parts cap on top of it. And a nice job there for Richie Keller. 223-34. Rick Durermo and Buddy Doherty up next. And there's a great example of a vehicle that has a high center of gravity and one with a much lower center of gravity. And you got to obviously think that that one with the lower center of gravity would do good at certain points in the track. And I would think this would not be the part of the track that would be the better of the two. However, it has proven me wrong right here. We're still struggling oh, trying to get up and man. over. And that's where I think the high center of gravity can hurt them. But finally, up and over that huge boulder. Now, that is a tough way to go right there. A lot of time lost there. Rick makes a good run. 211.93, and Buddy, after his struggles early on, to 3.12.97. Randy Rod and Brian Shirley going at it, and we saw the puff of smoke out of Shirley's vehicle earlier in the day as well. And look how far offset that one is towards the driver for Brian Shirley. Backs up real quick. Great onboard shot here, courtesy of Lucas Oil. If you take a look at that thing that looks like a seat belt, that's what these drivers call a travel limiter. And that means when that thing's outstretched at the most, you'd see that seat belt type strap extended tight. Yeah, a fallout strap there to keep the, uh, the shock from coming apart. And Brian Shirley, a time of 219.97, has been faster, but again, it's about adding all the rounds up together. And Shirley is second the very tough Shannon Campbell. Shannon, you're still perfect on the season, but winning never gets old, does it, man? <laughs> no, I don't get old. What's the main difference that you have against the competition? I don't know if there's any difference. I'm just getting lucky as I go, I guess. Listening to your machine go, it just sounds like you have so much more horsepower than, than everybody else. Is that true? No, I don't think it's much more horsepower. It's just how you put it to the ground, and it does have a distinctive sound, so it, it sounds more powerful, but it's just getting it put to the ground. 